Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to Rabble Rousers. I am Steve Ocelot, and this is the Rabble Rousers team. We have your Griff Amble Hands, Moxie, Fignatius, Mango Bobber, and Raymond. How's it going, guys? Awesome. How are good, you? Good, good. Going well, going it's, well. It is a lovely day. Nice. Uh, quick recap. In our first episode, we found ourselves in the land of Damara, uh, far to the northeast of the continent of Faerun. Three traveling misfits and a townie came together in the small logging village known as Oakshire. The various happenstance which made it, uh, which made it these uh, fast acquaintances included some cheese commerce, uh, a mangled boar, and some breakfast. Uh, word reached their ears that a young dwarven boy had gone missing, and upon discussions with one of the village counselors, they decided to help everyone search for the child. And that was where we had ended that episode. Uh, we actually played another game after that, and unfortunately we had some horrible, horrible audio problems. Wah, wah, wah. I need to get like a button where I can press that. I'm just, eh. I think eh. the horribleness of the problems depends on your perspective, because from my perspective, it would have made a great episode. What, the, the pro- oh, just me not talking and everyone else talking? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I'll send you that that raw footage, and you can you can have that. Or maybe maybe someday we'll release it, and everyone can just use it and insert what they think that I'm saying or something on a Patreon oh, or something. Yeah. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, we should do a bad lip reading of you. But uh, yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> I mean, the, my audio is already out, so that'd be perfect. Right. Oh, Rip man, we're gonna have to do that. But uh, but that's where. So we did have a whole second game it was our second game and we made it pretty far and we actually did catch the last uh maybe the last 30 minutes um once we get into a place that i'm not going to give away just yet because our players are going to give us a quick recap as to what happened after leaving the town square to go help the boy uh, and i think that we were starting with raymond indeed so without further ado um so uh this is going to be taken from Raymond's point of, point of view uh, as if he's writing in his diary. So here we go. <clears throat> dear diary. I'm not going to do that the whole time. Do it. Do it the whole uh, time. Dear, do it. dear diary. I came to this here town and on my way, I found a boar, killed it, dragged it into town, thought I'd sell it, make some money. Instead, on the way, I ran into some cheesemonger. He wanted half of it, so I gave a shitty cut on it and gave him the head. What an idiot. I took a cheese from him, and we uh, went and sold it, but we after that we went to this house of Ember Spire. That's where the boy was from. Anyways, we went inside, talked to some short dude, went upstairs to the uh, kid's house, kid's room, and uh, started looking around trying to find some shoes. Who would have thought it'd be so hard to find shoes? But anyways, the other the other lady, Moxie, found some drawings. Thought we'd go with those, take a look at them. Sure enough, there's a bunch of drawings of some basements and... God knows what else. What a weird kid. Anyways, we took the drawings and figured, well... He's looked through all these different places, the, the basements in town, and he's got some, some early looks at the temple. But he hasn't done very much at the temple, so we figured, let's go take a look there. It sounds like a fun place. Like, I don't really give a shit. So that's where uh, that's where we started off to. And as uh, as the group gathered their things and, and uh, met up and went to the boy's house and, and did all the searching, they, they then left and head, uh, headed over towards the temple, uh, where they found themselves uh, brought face to face with um the guards or the i guess the would-be townsfolk that are kind of watching the temple and i think that's where moxie comes in yes the guards the guards there was a temple and we could not go because some pricks doth told us so john bombastic was a dick wouldn't let us go look for a kid your made him tremble then finally, he did let us enter. Uh, we got into a fight with the guards who didn't want us to enter because we weren't allowed to go in. While we were doing this, um, Raymond and Fignatius ran around the corner, found their own way in, and uh, we went in our own way. And John Bombastic was very useless, but he has a very interesting name. 
I'm so happy you mentioned uh, Johnny Bombastic because that was one of the worst <laughs> impromptu <laughs> names I have ever made. <laughs> but I'm glad we uh, I'm glad we have it. And I'm glad I never. I thought I never, it was fantastic. I'm glad we never named the gnome. Uh, and a as as everyone is attempting to get in uh, by their own way <clears throat> to the uh, the the temple. Uh, Yurgriff and Moxie upstairs for a little while, and Fignatius and Raymond downstairs for a few. Uh, they spend some time trying to sort out how to get to each other and figure out where this boy is, and they end up in this this basement, or yeah, you know, it's kind of like this this part of the the temple that isn't supposed to be found almost. And in the center of it, there's this massive long table with chairs all around it. It is very dark and is dank. And Yurgriff Anvil hands uh, will take it from there. Now the four of us were downstairs in this basement quite perplexed on what we should do to, to move forward. So I looked around and Moxie looked around and you're Griff and that is me. I do apologize. I am. My words are all tangled up. Uh, Figgy and Raymond all looked around and we saw this table with these uh, cut ins and skull and well, I decided to cut my hand, and what I did is I dropped some of that sweet dwarven blood onto that table, and it sucked it right up, opening the wall, and we made our way through. So the the group uh, happened upon this space, and uh, were able to find out a little bit of information uh, about this the symbol that was there, and it was a a skull uh, wreathed with uh, with blood droplets all around it, and uh, a little cursory thinking back into the past, I believe by maybe Fignatius, uh, he recalls that being uh, information about uh, a, uh, a a deity of some sort uh, named Ball, and. Uh, just out of chance, Yergriff was able to figure out how to open this door. Uh, and as the door lifted, it showed them a set of stairs heading downwards into another area. Uh, not long after this is where our video and audio sync back up and everything works fine. But I still want you, Fignatius, to give me a rundown of everything that we did in the basement. And I thought I was going to escape this. Uh, but... <laughs> I... <laughs> As we enter the abandoned temple's sub-basement, we find our team sitting in a room made up of smooth stone floors and masonry walls. There's cool air down here, and although some, lights, some light is shed from above into the opening of the space, it is very dark, apart from, of course, having the torches that you brought down with you. On the ground, not from, from the stairs, you do see unburnt torches. There are a handful of them amidst the rubble. And as uh, your light fills the rest of the room, you see a pair of doors to the west. Both are simple in structure and are made of wood, one to the north and one to the south. Uh, just behind you, uh, there is another uh, section that has a wooden portcullis, which is currently down. Uh, someone is scrawled into the wall. Death comes on silent wings, and it is written in common. Uh, it appears to potentially have been written in blood, but now long since dried. There are many more torches uh, that scatter uh, the walls as well. Uh, none of them are lit. They are in sconces. Uh, as Raymond steps away from the keyboard, uh, he was checking out the port close to see what was going on. What would you guys like to do while we wait for Raymond? I want to go put all the torches in and start lighting them. Put them in all the holders okay. and light them up. You uh, you start doing that. It's going to take you a good minute or two to, to collect them all, put them in place, and light each one of them. But you start working on that. Uh, Moxie and Yurgriff. Uh, the writing says death comes on silent wings, you said? Correct. Do I recognize it uh, as any sort of like... Uh, anything from like a folklore or a story or a poetry or song or something that I would have heard like through my travels over the years or is it more just like a warning um why don't you i'm gonna have you make an insight check and and the reason i'm choosing insight is to kind of give you a sense as to why it was written i suppose um you think that it is one of two things it is either a warning or it is maybe a motto you haven't necessarily okay. heard it like in poems or anything like that, but just the way that it's written, the the way you know the the the, uh, the kind of scrawling or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Math. Do 
do we uh, see anything new after the torches are lit? Uh, no, you do not. The torches just light up the room. Yorgriff he uh, heads over to one of the wooden doors and he opens it. Okay. So there's one to the north and south, correct? Correct. Which one would you like to hit? Uh, based on where they are, uh, based on where they are, uh, my guess is north is that one and south is that one. Uh, that is correct, yes. Uh, he's going to go to the north door. Okay. Uh, so this is a, a simple wooden door. It appears to be stuck on its hinges. It doesn't want to just push or pull open. He puts his... Is it ajar at all? It is not. All right, it is fully closed. Correct. He leaves it alone and goes to the north, the south door and tries the same thing. Okay. Uh, that door, is, it's, it has like a handle and a locking mechanism, but as you turn the knob, it, it cracks open. Turns back to the group and... Uh, now, they say a door seems to open quite freely, but our north door does not. And uh, there is no sign of the north door being a jaw, so I'm not sure if it's locked or if there is someone behind it making sure that we cannot come in. Is there some sort of locking mechanism on the other door? You saw that there was one, but it doesn't didn't seem to matter. It just seems like the door itself, as you give it a nudge, it does move a little bit, but it is like it is stuck. There is a uh, locking mechanism on the door, but as I push it, I believe that being down here for so long has warped the wood and is unless we want to try to brute force it is not going to open quite as freely as its southern counterpart. I, uh, I strut up and I'm like, guys, make way. I'll take care of this. And uh, just double checking, uh, the rest of the structure is all stone, right? And it's just a door that's wooden. Yes. I fire bolt the door. Okay. Uh, make an attack roll, please. <laughs> okay. So you, uh, you, your fire bolt slams into the door. Uh, roll damage, please. <laughs> and as it slams into the door, you see it just and puff out. Uh, the door cracks a little bit. It has taken one point of damage. <laughs> uh, I don't want to waste a spell slot on magic missile, so I look at Gurgriff and I'm like, hey, bro, it's your turn. Well, I'm sorry, friend. I cannot cast Firebolt. See, I am just a <laughs> simple. I'm just a simple dwarf who likes to make himself weaponry, armory, and shields. Uh, what about your axe? He pulls out his long sword. He pulls out his long sword, and he's like, "Oh, you mean my old widowmaker here?" All right, and he takes a hack at the door. As you uh, you pull your widowmaker out and you come to slam into the door, please make an attack roll against the door. Okay. Um, as you slam into the door, uh, roll your damage, please. Nice. Okay. Seven, because uh, he, he had the shield as well. Okay. Um, you crack into the door uh, pretty hard. Um, and between uh, the damage that you and now Fignatius have done, uh, you crack it to a point where you think you can just grab it and pull on it and break it apart enough to be able to get past it. Uh, you don't see anything behind it as you do this. It is just that, as you said, the wood has warped. It really can't. It just couldn't open it on its own. But uh, you see behind you a, uh, a darkened hallway lit uh, just a fair, maybe like a few feet downwards. Uh, you can see because you have dark vision, but uh, it is dark pretty much to the end of the hall, and then it seems like it, it curves down south. 
from there. He relays that informa and information back to uh, Fig. He says, uh, "What do you want to do, my friend?" Let's uh, let's check it out. And I fall in step. Raymond he turns back to the group and he says, uh, uh, "Fignacious and I are gonna go check out this here hallway. You're welcome to join us or keep doing whatever it is uh, you guys are doing back there." You see Raymond uh, look back at the noise as he's looking at this portcullis, trying to understand what the mechanism is. Poor guy's trying to finesse everything, and we just blasted through this door. As the group heads through, uh, through that doorway, you find yourself in a, a ten foot wide hallway that goes down, you know, a, a few, and then you you kind of bank left, and it heads uh, hit, heads southwards, and then it banks again uh, to the left, and you find yourself heading uh, kind of back the way you came a little bit. You come to a dead end. Uh, there doesn't seem to be anything down here of note. Are there any? Uh, trap doors or anything like that or uh, some can, kind of a uh, make an investigation check to see if you can find some trap doors if you'd like 12 12 okay uh, you don't find anything that seems like it's a trap dory situation over here Looks to be a de dead end, folks. Maybe we head back the other one, the other door. Foiled by a door. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm ready to give up on that one. Although well, at something least we, tells me. At least we know for now that this hallway is clean. So you find yourselves back in that same room with a, uh, a door to the south side of that same area and a portcullis across the way. Is there any kind of uh, doorknob or anything like that on this door that we could kick open? Yeah, Yurgriff has already checked this out. It's it's open already, like slightly ajar. Okay. Uh, let's go. Okay. Uh, you guys push the door open and you head down... Uh, you bank a left and you head down a bit and you find yourself in front of another portcullis. This one's made of metal. Uh, it is also down and it looks like the metal uh, metal bars go pretty deep into the ground and into the ceiling. You see past it, uh, it is a very dark room. Uh, and, you know, for, for Fignatius and Raymond, your torchlight only makes it so far. Uh, so you're really not catching a whole lot. Your Griffin Moxie, you can see a little further into the room. Uh, and what you see is... Uh, dun, 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 dun. Um, this room is, is a lot larger in size, so also you guys can only see kind of so far as well. Um, but, uh, at the edge of, uh, dim light, uh, you see what appears to be a chest in the center of the room. Uh, Yergriff, my good friend, you know your medals. They're a way to open this thing. Uh, he goes, he looks back at Raimi and says, well, my years of adventure have told me that if you find a chest in the middle of the room, it is more than likely going to be a trap. Uh, would one of y'all who, anyone, uh, experienced in disabling traps because, uh, I certainly am not. I might. I might be able to, but first we've got to get through this uh, portcullis to be able to get there. Is there like some sort of lever or contraption in the room we can see that might open the door? Make a make an investigation check. You said you start kind of searching around the walls and the in the portcullis itself to try to figure it out. Um, you see nothing on this side, but what I can tell you is that on the other side, uh, you see what appears to be a, um, like a, a lever of some, some sort. Uh, it's not close enough to the porkless itself to designate that it's definitely meant for it, but it's within your view. Can I use my mage hand to attempt to use it? You can. Uh, as you cast your mage hand and you send it out, 
it pulls down and you hear <laughs> you hear from behind you back the way you came the sound of uh something lifting <laughs> sounds like the other portcullis opened let's try that way your griff my my beefy friend would you like to lead the way I can do such things. And he uh, starts walking through the now open park callus. So the group continued through this one of these multitudes of port callai. And uh, nice word, by the way. That was, that was a good pull. Um, and found themselves into a, uh, a hallway that was pretty dark. And I believe uh, Raymond has, is carrying a lit torch at the moment. Uh, and if I recall correctly, Yurgriff and Moxie can both see in the dark for a certain distance anyway. Uh, but they had walked into this hallway that had a, uh, a tile labyrinth floor. And it looked like it was could have been really beautiful at one point, but they had found that there's some weird uh, slippery substance all over it. Uh, it's all over the ground, it's all over the walls, it's pretty gross looking. And they had heard some scraping sounds coming from down the corridor, uh, echoing almost as if it was kind of a little ways away. And... As the torchlight kind of moved through the corridor, they took a they took a turn uh, in this area on our, in an area on our map, and I'll switch to our map scene now. Um, and they took a turn around the corner over here, and then another turn over in in this general region here, and find themselves looking down a hallway. Uh, Raymond's light couldn't get super far, but Yurgriff and, and Moxie can see distance enough, and can hear what that can hear and see what that sound is and as they rounded the corner a waft of acrid death hit their nostrils and the scraping got louder and in the eyesight of two of the party they noticed these creatures one of them mulling about a little further away not really paying as much attention about their direction but another one that is drawn seemingly to the sounds of their squishing feet on the ground noticing that uh that squishing now is probably the gross coagulated blood guts and sinew of these uh, undead looking creatures and we left our game last time before the crash right here rolling our first initiative of the campaign ba -ba 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 -ba. so i got a a nine for figgy i've got a 15 for your griff yes that is correct. And uh, Greg, do me a favor. Roll me two d20s, please. Uh oh. Moxie's a 19. Raymond is. Uh, the a first 19. one would be a natural 20. Okay. The second would be a 10. Natural 20 and a 10. I actually just had you roll initiative for me because I thought that would be kind of cool to just do it. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so we have uh, for one of those that natural twenty. Unfortunately, that's not a thing. And he just wanted you to waste your natural twenty. I did. I just I wanted you to blow your natural twenty. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. I never want to do that to anybody. That'd be horrible. Well, uh, I did. But, so thank you. Uh, as don't worry about that timer. I don't know why that's doing that. I will fix that later. But as uh, as this one creature just just within the very edges of Moxie's range starts slothing its way towards the group, Moxie, you are up. Okay. Um. I will look at it and make sure I have Vicious Mockery, I do, and cast it at the closer one. Okay. You want me to display the thing, or? Um, what do you mean, display it? Like, that, so it comes up with all the information about it? Oh no 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 it's fine. Uh, I I mean why don't okay. you just give it why don't you just give it a readout for anyone new that might be tuning in that that doesn't do D and D or just it a refresher. It is a cantrip, and you unleash a string of insults laced with subtle enchantments to hurt them with your nasty words. Okay. Uh, do they make a saving throw? I can't recall. Uh yeah, wisdom save of fourteen. 
Okay. I'm going to make a wisdom save. And that is going to be a 13. Failure. Yeah, so it's four psychic damage. Four psychic damage. Nice. Our first real attack of the game, our first attack at all of the game, flies and, and you you just start to speak and, and saying like what do you say to them? What do you like what do you you, you come around the corner, um, you see this and you just bah. If ignorance is bliss, then you should be happier. And I cast it. You hear this response. Uh, uh, <laughs> this this sad this sad zombie sound. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out how to kill that timer because that's annoying. But anyway, uh, is there anything else for your turn? That was your action. I believe you still have movement, bonus action. Oh, I'm not moving. I'm staying over there. Okay. Behind so everybody. Moxie just kind of like inches and goes, Poo! casts this thing and you see uh, down the hallway uh, as this thing is kind of inching towards you guys. Uh, Raymond, you are up. Uh, can Raymond see them? Uh, Raymond can. Let's see here. With the torch, uh, with the torch, you can just catch the edge of one of them, the one that's uh, the one that's right in front there. Okay. Um, sure. Raymond's gonna uh, knock a bow. Knock a bow. He's gonna knock an arrow in his bow, and he is going to use his feet sharpshooter. Uh, to attack that there zombified creature. Okay, why don't you give me a rundown on the sharpshooter uh, feet? Because that's actually so one I'm not very familiar with. The sharpshooter feet, uh, attacking at long range doesn't impose disadvantage on ranged weapon attacks, and your ranged attacks ignore half cover and three quarters cover. Uh, before you make an attack with a ranged weapon you're proficient in, you can take a minus five penalty to the attack roll and add 10 to the attack uh, damage if I hit. Okay. So uh, why don't you make your attack then? What are you attacking with? Your so I'll, sure. uh, my longbow. Okay, cool. So uh, Ray Raymond, you you watch uh, and, and Figgy, you watch as your 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 vision shifts a little bit in this hallway as as Raymond needs to drop the uh, the uh, the torch and, and and it hits the ground and you watch the light kind of shift a bit. You catch a quick glimpse of that zombie, uh, the zombie in the back as it hits, and then all of a sudden the torch goes out. And everything goes dark as Raymond is firing already. He's already launching his first arrow before the fire goes out. Raymond, what do you got? So I'm going to roll it normal. So take five off of what you see. Uh, a 13, so ugh, an eight. Eight to hit? Yep. And eight hits? You. No kidding. It does. You wow. drop. So you, you pull out. You kind of go back with the uh, with the, the the torch and like drop it behind you as you're grabbing an arrow and knock it and you let it fly and it and it's the last thing that Fignatius sees as it strikes this zombie dead center in the chest uh, as the torch hits the ground bounces a couple times and then the gross guts and everything that's on the ground just put it out and then it goes dark for both of you Raymond what's the damage on that please so I rolled a six plus ten is sixteen. 16 damage. Nice. Crush. Devastating hey, damage. Gosh. I also have a torch. Do you have one lit? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't remember if you did upstairs. or not, so we'll say that you have one lit. And uh, so you can well, see... Well, it could have gone out, and I'll just light it back up again. Okay. So then you're... Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, for, thanks for fixing my cool story. I got you sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, usually not. <laughs> so, so Raymond, that was uh, that was your action. Uh, do you have anything else you want? Do you have a bonus action movement? Uh, right now, I do not. I'm just gonna, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna hang out where I am. Okay, that zombie in the back. Uh, you hear this shuffling uh, off in the distance, and I think uh, your Griff, you're probably the only one close enough at this point to really see that one in the back. No, I guess Moxie can too. Um, but Yergriff, uh, you you hear this other one further further down start to kind of shift in and shamble in your direction, um, and then it comes into uh, more full view as it gets 5, 10, 15, 20, and then it gets another dash 5, 10, 15, 20 to about right there. Uh, but it it is unable to get anywhere near you at this point, and you see it coming at you, Yergriff, as you go, oh, okay, and uh, you figure out what you want to do because it's your turn. 
Yergriff sees this thing stumbling towards him. He says, uh, now it looks like y'all ready for a tussle, so let's tussle. And he pulls out his Widowmaker longsword, this beautiful steel sword with a red vein running through it, almost as red as his beard. Uh, and he moves up to it, and he is going to uh, take a swipe at it. Cool. That is a 14 to hit. 14 will hit, sir. As you, you rush through and you, you hear your, your boots sloshing through this blood and guts in the ground, and you just come up with your, your long sword. You do it, uh, you're doing two hand? One handed. One, one handed. He has a shield. That's right, you have your shield. So you have your shield out and you, you, you put it out in front of you and you come down with this thing and crack right into it. How much damage? 13 damage. Nice, 13 damage. As you just see a bunch of like it's it's you can watch like a giant chunk of its side and shoulder fall off and splash into the ground, uh, and it's pretty fucking gross. Do you yeah, have anything hey, else David, you want to do? That looks like how you cut the boar. Anything else for you, Yorgriff? You're muted. Uh, no, that would be that is his action, and uh, he doesn't have a bonus action he can use at the moment, so he's done. Okay. So as Yergriff rushes into the fray, um, Fignatius, you you light up your torch in the, in the midst of this whole thing, uh, and you see what's going on. You see Yergriff rushing off. He's already he's already ten or fifteen feet away from you, rushing towards this other zombie that's now in sight that you hadn't seen before. And from this distance, you can see two ahead of you. Um, and you you look down as you do this, and you say, ah, "I'm still bleeding." Like you can see that the the cuts that you got. Uh, not the cuts, the, uh, like, you, you, like, bleeding out your mouth from when you had ate that cheese and you took eight damage oh. earlier, earlier in the day, and you just see it dripping my off of... still slopping onto my hands. It's, like, it's still, like, dripping out, and you can see now that, like, your whole tunic is just covered in your own <laughs> red blood. What do you want to do? Um, I'm gonna say, well, poor Figgy. Things will be okay. And then I, I look up. I say, well, I gotta save, gotta save my friends, and I can see the second zombie. You thingy? can, you can see them both. Yes, it, th that one is just outside or just inside your view. Perfect. So I'm gonna go for number two, and I'm going to cast Jim's magic missile. Oh, you chose Jim's magic missile. Okay, okay, cool. So uh, <laughs> we should talk about this a little later because this might come into play with some things that you might want to change. Uh, for right now, okay. though, because I think this is funny. Uh, so there are certain magics in this world that were created by more business savvy people. Uh, one of them being Jim Dark Magic. And <laughs> Jim Dark Magic created Jim's magic missile. And you have it, and you can use it. But every time you do, it costs one gold. I didn't see that. <laughs> it's a, it's okay. I just think it's funny. Uh, ju just, <laughs> just okay, fine. use your magic missile. We'll sort that out later. No, no, this is perfect. I can take it. I can. <laughs> it's worth it later on because man, it can it can do some big damage. Wait, who, who still, does it go to? Who does the money go to? Turn. It goes to Jim Dark Magic. Jimmy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm gonna cast Jim's magic missile. Go. All right. So magic missile hit. is is uh, automatic. It just goes. And uh, you have how many? Uh, two. It's just it's just so two, two d four. So so uh, yeah. Two, well, it says uh, effect is two d four. I thought magic missile was just automatic hits. I think Jim's is not automatic. That's okay. I think that was that's what I perceived as the cost of choosing Jim's over regular magic missile. You know what? I actually I actually like that. So let's do this. I think this is a cool move. So one time, Fignatius, as you're as you pull you pull out your spell book and you're looking down what you're gonna do to this zo this zombie, you uh you say, Oh yeah, I remember meeting that dude. He was a weird motherfucker. Uh, and you had learned this f spell from, from a person named Jim. Dark Magic, you met very briefly, uh, not really friends or anything like that, but he taught it to you, and, and the deal was that you can pay a gold, and it will just automatically hit, like normal Magic Missile does, or you can cast it and have to make an attack roll. I know that's not in-game, but you know what I mean, right? So now you can... Could, you, you, could, you, you, 
Go ahead. Can you repeat that? Could you, yeah. could you explain that one more so time? So you can, you can spend a gold on Jim's magic missile to automatically hit. Because that's what magic missile does, uh, typically. Okay, okay. But because it's Jim's magic missile, if you don't want to spend the gold, or if you don't have the money to spend the gold, then you can make the attack roll instead. In which case, for this, let's say you made the attack roll, and it hit with an 18 for sure. Uh, which one were you attacking? Uh, the second one. The second one, the one in the back. Uh, and it yep. hits, and the creature takes some damage, and you watch it, you watch it fall to the ground and start to... Don't worry about that, Moxie. We'll get back to you in a second. You watch it, it start to shudder a, a little bit as it makes a constitution saving throw uh, to see whether or not... I'm just going to roll a regular d20. This is probably going to come up as... This is going to come up as Figgy, but it's not Figgy. It's me. Everybody wants to be Figgy. What do we get? Uh, 14. In roll 20, my name shows up as Fignacio. All right, so it actually, so it actually falls and it drops down to a knee, and it's like a bunch of it has just been tro chopped off of this thing, but it drops to one knee, and what should have killed this thing didn't, and you watch as it starts to stand back up again. Uh, it's in rough shape. It has, like, it has most of its body is is torn away. There's only a little bit of flesh left on the bone. It looks more like a skeleton than a zombie now, but uh, it is still moving. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to do in your turn? That was your action. That was my action, and uh, I'm just going to move a little bit over, so I'm peering around the corner instead of in direct line from any of these guys. Okay. You totally do that, and as uh, that happens, it is now Moxie's turn. As you kind of sneak around the side, you're like, ah, shit, <laughs> and you kind of get out of the way. <laughs> I'm still bleeding. Crap. Moxie, what you got? Um... Ah, so we're both doing this now, huh? <laughs> um, I will look at the things and I will take out my rapier and I will approach the, I guess, closer one. Yeah. Cool. So you, uh, you, you see Fignatius kind of step in front of you, and you pull out your rapier, and you start to move forward into this hallway. Uh, you're heading towards the first one here? Yes. And you, you rush down into this area and uh, rush right up to it with your rapier out and ready to go. And as you swing with a... What'd you get, 16 to hit? <laughs> As you swing with your 16, you kind of come back and just whoosh, straight through it, and it hits. And how much damage do you do? 11 piercing damage. 11. As it takes uh, 11 piercing damage, uh, you see it, like, you, as it's sticking in there, you see it. Whoosh, whoosh, uh, as it also makes a constitution saving throw. And this time, it's going to roll as Moxie, because I'm just using your own character sheets against you. <laughs> I need to like create, I gotta bring up, oh, I gotta bring up Rabbles, I have my character. Uh, it does not roll enough to sustain itself, um, and you watch as it just kind of, you push off of it, and it falls backwards and splatters into the ground as that zombified creature is uh, what we would call, in my country, dead. Disgusting. Uh, that was your movement in action, you still have a bonus action, I believe? Uh, bonus action, Bardic Inspiration to Raymond. Cool. So uh, at this level, it's what, a D6? Yeah, no. Let me double check that I have that at this level. Okay. We're level one, right? Uh, yep, level one still. I do, and it is a D6. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah, so... Hey, uh, don't uh, fuck up. Kill that one. <laughs> You hear these encouraging words come from uh, come from up ahead, Raymond. Uh, as as there's not a whole lot of light up there now, because your 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 thing went out, your um your torch went out, and Fignacious is kind of around the corner a little bit, so you can just barely see the backs of your Griffin Moxie. But you hear her turn back and, and yell this in your direction, uh, and you are given uh, essentially uh, inspiration. You can have a D six uh, on your turn to roll for its attack roll saving throws. Anything, right? It's everything but damage okay everything but damage so you get one one extra d6 to roll at your uh the leisure 
Uh, that zombie is is what we call dead, so I'm just going to remove it from the initiative order. Uh, Yurgriff, you watch as Moxie runs up and just stabs this thing and pushes it off. It falls to the ground, splatters in front of you, and then turns back and yells something to Raymond uh, that you take, you know, maybe as inspira inspiratory. You're not sure, um, but it's your turn. There's one zombie ahead of you, and it is, it is still up and running, even after that blast it took from Ignatius. Feeling uh, very... Uh, feeling very inspired, Raymond runs right up between. It's not Raymond's Yergriff turn, Raymond. Oh, was it? Shit, no, it should be. <laughs> it, was, turn. Uh, it should be. Oh, should it be? It's Moxie. You're right. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's because the stupid timer is it's going. The timer. Raymond, yeah. it is your turn. My bad. My bad. No worries. Can't, and I can't turn the uh, timer off. It just is telling me to screw. I just can't even bring up the menu. So anyway, okay. go ahead. Raymond runs up between Yurgriff and Moxie, and uh, he knows it's a pretty long hallway, so he just kind of is going to aim and, and take a shot down the hallway and try to hit that thing. Okay. Um, he is going to do another uh, sharpshooter shot. Okay, yeah, so you rush up. Uh, and right between the two shoulders, you just you pin it and get it ready, and you let it fly. And your 17 flies through the air and strikes this thing clean in the face, like right through one of the eye sockets. Roll damage, please. So that is a 10 plus 10 is 20. Oh. Huh. I can roll con saves right on the zombie sheet. Uh, so uh, it needs to make a constitution saving throw. You, you launch this thing in and, I mean, 20 damage straight through the eye socket for sure. Uh, this thing rolls a quick constitution save and it fails. Uh, it would have been a, uh, it would have been nowhere near enough. And you watch as it just, and well, I think I almost spit up in real life there. Uh, as, <laughs> set, as said zombie uh, crashes to the ground and is uh, what we call dead. Um, for the sake of this, I'm going to remove all our turns so we don't have this ticking thing going off anymore. Uh, and you look ahead of you and the three of you can see uh, at this point, uh, Raymond, it's it's incredibly dark. Uh, I should have probably had you do that at disadvantage, but that's okay. Uh, you call back and, and Fignatius, you know that it's, it's safe to come out from your hiding corner. Um, I knew it was safe. It's always <laughs> safe for me. Uh, you're Griffin Moxie, uh, you look ahead, uh, you can see all the way to the end of this hallway, the two of you, like, just to the end of it, the, the end corridor, maybe, like, that last, uh, wall or whatever is a little dark, but you can see all the way to the end, you don't see any other zombies in this direction, but you do see, uh, more of this kind of bloody, gutty, sinew garbage, kind of, in that direction. What would you guys like to do? I would like to cast Tensor's Floating Disc and ride it down the hallway because I don't want to step in this stuff. You already have Tensor's floating disc? It was just one of the ones that I added, I, but I'm not sure if I'm allowed to. Yeah, I, I didn't go over anyone's spells. I probably should have, but it doesn't really matter. For the time being, it is what it is. As long as level, it's a level one spell, you're good, right? Yeah, you're all set. You, uh, you guys hear this, you hear this chanting coming from behind you. And you're like, what the fuck? And you turn back and you see Fignatius has has like almost kneeled down on the ground and he's like drawing these weird runes in the in the blood and guts on the ground. And he does this for almost 10 minutes. And no one says anything, but you just watch him like, what the fuck is he doing? And then all of a sudden, poof, this weird floating disc. What does it look like? What does your floating disc look like? I want you to give me the flavor on your floating disc. So imagine, yeah, so it's like, it's not a, it's not actually like, it's a, it's a disc, but it's like a loosely defined disc. And it looks more like, um, imagine a floating version of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle skateboard, like the old retro skateboards at the back, but it's big enough to hold the 500 pounds and people and that kind of stuff. That's my okay. floating disc. Well, so, so uh, go ahead. It's not cheese. It's not like a thing of cheese that you're floating on. I wish. Yeah, but, so this, uh, but this. actually, but it is. It has a cheese pattern. 
So that's cheese. So this cheese patterned disc about, of, of about three feet in diameter and one inch thick that is, is big enough to fit at least one person on it or a whole bunch of stuff that has been stacked up or can be spread out across it and hang off the edges. It just appears uh, and Fignatius pops on it and just floats very slowly towards the group who have been waiting very patiently for him to finish doing this weird shit he's doing. Is there anything that you and three would have liked to have been doing while he's casting this ritual spell in this weird dank dungeon? Raymond uh, is going to pick up his arrows uh, and his torch, and then he's um, he's going to look on one of the zombies to see whether they have anything of value on them or anything. Okay. So... Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but I would like you. I'm gonna deal it. I'm gonna deal a treasure deck card because I bought these a long time ago on roll twenty, and I never use them for anything. And I, I, I spaced and didn't think to come up with stuff. So I'm gonna deal a single treasure deck card. It is gonna be dealt to you, Mr. Frank. Um, you should be able to click that card in roll twenty, and then I think you have to roll a die, and it will tell you what you get off based off that roll. Huh? Do I roll it in roll twenty? Uh, you can roll it however you see fit. I don't. I don't care. Oh, oh okay. I just clicked I this. Apparently, I just stole the card. <laughs> I don't know how this works. <laughs> I rolled a one, so I have now an ornate stylus worth fourteen. Oh, I'm supposed to roll a d12, not a whatever. Either way, an ornate stylus worth 14 gold pieces. Okay. You uh, you start searching over this this one zombie a little further away from the one that Yurgriff and Moxie are at, and uh, and you um, you find that it th the creature itself was probably somebody from town. You haven't been there very long. You haven't been in Oakshire more than, you know, less, well, hell, less than 24 hours at this point, really. And you just kind of see what they all wear. Uh, you did see a handful of people that work clearly at the lumber mill wearing uh, wearing very similar type of clothing to this person. Uh, and you find this, this nice ornate stylus. And what it's worth is whatever it says it is. You can just mark that down. It's probably not in D&D Beyond as an item. Uh, but write that down in your notes that you have that. Um, when <clears throat> when Figgy completes his disc and this this disc kind of appears and he just hops on it, Raymond just looks at him and says, "You you were making that this whole time? Wanna I thought jump you were on, doing bro? something cool. It just jump on. Trust me, it's going to be the best time of your life. I can fit one more person with me." Ray Raymond Raymond declines the offer. I slowly, or as fast as the disc will allow, ram it into the back of Raymond's butt. What's what's the damage on that, Mr. DM? So it's, it's, I'm gonna I'm gonna say there's 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 no damage on that. I think it's just a just cool flavor. Slow. So uh, one thing to note, and this is something that that we will do pretty frequently because I, I think that you know rules are great and all, but it's it's really about having fun and the disc the disc works in different ways uh there's a whole kind of very big description of it and i'm pretty sure it's not really meant for riding on but i like the idea of riding on it uh so because um it typically is supposed to stay within 20 feet of you when when it's following around we're just going to say that the disc's movement speed is 20 does that make sense so if you're on the disc you're going to move a little slower than you usually move fignatius but uh, okay, I, I like using it as a Ninja Turtle skateboard. I think that's a great, great <laughs> idea. I'm just imagining, like, if I was in one of those, um, you know, what were those, like, little, like, electric cars? Uh, like, the Hot Wheels, or not the Hot Wheels, what are those Jeeps, those electric Jeeps that you used to get as kids where you could, like, ride in them? Power Wheels. Yeah, Power, the power wheels. wheels. Yeah. So I imagine this as, like, I'm a little kid on a Power Wheels trying to ram into the back of people, and it's just going to go boop. Uh, yeah, so Raymond, you feel think. you feel as you like the back of your the back of one of your knees buckles a little bit as Fignatius <laughs> bumps into you. <laughs> you should have taken up my offer, bro. Raymond just keeps walking. <laughs> I keep I keep hitting the back of his ankle slash knee. 
Okay. Uh, Moxie and Yurgur, was there anything you wanted to be doing while that was going down? Ten minutes is a decent amount of time. Can your griff how um beaten are these zombies are they just like chunks at this point uh no they're full bodies for sure um they've just kind of fallen to the ground one of them is more skeletal than a zombie at this point and all of the body parts that uh that you and moxie slothed off of it are kind of right around that little skeleton is he able to make out um if he knows these people. Uh, why don't you make a... Hmm. Uh, looking at your griff, I would say that you could probably make a... A perception or an insight check. Your choice, but give me the reason why you choose one or the other. Uh, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I don't. All right. I don't think it would be insight, given what insight is. Yeah. I mean, I I, I so, could I could argue that insight might be like uh the what it has on it, stuff like that. You know. I don't know. Uh, he's gonna make a perception check to try and uh. I'm making you know, up rules, bitch. Yeah. I guess I guess he'll do an inside check, and what he'll do is, um, check the clothing, like check out their clothing to see if he can tell if it's, you know, using his. Uh, I guess he really wouldn't know that, but oh, you know, to uh, see if it if it looks old, beat up, or if it's relatively new. You know, why don't um, you just why don't you just make a perception check? Because I'm actually reading insight now. I've never used insight right ever in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> uh it doesn't matter it's a seven okay uh all that all that in a seven in the 10 minutes this is going down uh, raymond was at least able to give you enough information that his zombie it definitely looks like one of the lumber workers that he had seen above ground not maybe not one of them he saw but like that type of person this one you're looking at i mean it, all the stuff that slothed off of its bones because you two rocked it so hard or kind of just mingled in with the rest of the slimy stuff on the ground at this point. It's kind of hard to sort that out. Uh, why don't you do me a favor, Yurgris? You're the Yurgriff. Make me a uh, make me a history check. You're a townie. You've lived in this this village pretty much right after its inception, right? Uh, thirteen. Okay. Um. You do know that when you first came here, it was not long after, uh, and the town had the town had only been around for maybe five or ten years at that point. And it was not long after you arrived that they cordon, kind of cordoned off the the temple and stopped letting people in here. And the reason that was given at the time, which has kind of been lost over the last forty or so years, people don't talk about it anymore, is that. Townspeople had gone missing when they were um, when they were searching the ruins in the area, the temple, some of the caves that they found in the woods and stuff like that. And they know for a fact that people people went and delved into this place before, and they never like most people could never figure out how they got in, but they know that they never came back after entering the upper floors of the temple, and that's why there is now guards that guard the front entrance there. Yurgriff, uh, Yurgriff relays this information to the team. And at this point, Fignatius comes strolling up and knocks Marty in the back of the knee. Who? Sorry, Raymond in the back of the knee. And then I use, um, my, uh, mind talking skills, my mind link that I still have active with Damon. Say, so that's what you get, Damon. And I repeat it on every three seconds. Cut it out! And then I go, what are you talking about? Because nobody else knows about our mind link. 
May I have, use my I mage hand to carry my torch? 20 feet in front of me. You certainly can. If you would like to do that, you can uh, essentially take your mage hand and it grabs your torch. How long does your mage hand last? Um, I think it's... Let me double check. I believe it's a minute, right? One minute. Okay. Uh, but it's a cantrip, right? Yeah. So you can continue, as long as we're not in combat, you can continuously cast it. So we'll just say, so you, you cast Mage Hand, it grabs your torch and brings it out. And it, it, it continuously follows out to the point like that would normally be where like Fignatius and Raymond's sight cuts off. And it, it lights up the area enough to cover the entirety of Moxie and Yergriff's uh, dark, uh, dark vision distance. So you can all see the same amount of distance at this point. And every time it's about to go out, you cast it again and the next Mage Hand flies catches. down and grab, grabs the next one and catches it, and it keeps doing that over and over again. But uh, you can see the way the way is lit. The way is lit. Nice reference. Your Griff <clears throat> turns to the group and he says, uh, now using my dog vision, I don't see much in front of us. We should continue on and try to reach that chest in the other room that we saw. Let's do it. And I speed down the hallway as fast as my skateboard will allow. <laughs> so F Fignatius tries to speed down the hallway down one side, but the rest of you just kind of walk past him because uh, it doesn't move as fast as the rest of you can move uh, just walking normally. Um, as you start to get further down this hallway, that acrid stench of death that you had smelled before begins to grow more harsh. And the ground begins to become a bit more sloth-like. Um, it gets hard to walk through this, and essentially, uh, we'll call this difficult terrain. So your speed becomes half, but you you're, you're trudging through this this blood, this bile, this viscera, whatever is kind of le leaking down the halls all over the place, uh, which you now know is probably parts of old bounds folk, maybe pretty gross. Um, but uh, you round the corner. You all kind of put yourselves down that way. You all get to the end of the thing there. The zombie's dead. I'm just going to delete them because, you know, precious system resources. Uh, and you find yourselves face to face towards the end of the hallway with what appears to be a pile of bodies. Some of them, from this distance, you can tell that some of them are children. Some of them resemble townsfolk based on their clothing. Some of them resemble probably adventuring types. You can see, you know, some, some weaponry and some armor and stuff that's kind of just piled in this. Nothing's moving, uh, but there's a big pile of them. And they're, they aren't really blocking your way, but there's something that to get around it, you would have to crawl over this kind of larger pile in this, in this area. Uh, they are right here, dead center, where I'm pinging. They never sent anybody down to clean. Your Griff looks at Fig uh, Figgy. He's like, maybe you could take that gate board and uh, see if maybe you can slip it under the bodies over there and move those uh, move those kind people along. The whole reason why I did this was so I don't have to step in this slough. Now you're asking me to get off of my board? I'll take one for the team. And then I stand up as if I'm skateboarding, but there's no skateboards at this time and age, but as if I'm skateboarding, I jump off and I try to land. And I think I land in the stuff. Make, Maybe a, I need to do make a an acrobatics check, check, please. Okay, well, if I'm going to do an acrobatics check, then I'm trying to do a backflip and land really cool-like. Okay, well, def definitely make an acrobatics check then. Eight. An eight. Oh, please don't do too much damage, okay? I only have two. Just because you if might I fail just because you might fail a check doesn't mean I'm always going to do damage to you. <laughs> I'm just saying, just in case. No, no, no. You, uh, you, you start to move ahead at you know a slower speed than you could if you were running and then you jump off of this thing but some of that goo is on your feet and you slip off your own your own uh disc your own board and it continues forward a few feet and moves its way up 
the the pile of bodies and stops at the top of the pile of bodies and just hovers a few inches above them as you plat right on your ass and just get covered in what you look down is it's just green bile and and coagulated blood and you are covered in it worse than the boar's blood that was dripping down your back this whole time covering the boar <laughs> so now covered in boar's blood zombie guts and my own blood yeah <laughs> i'm not, i'm not i'm not doing too well um may i may i do something in a fit of frustration do whatever you like sir i cast a firebolt at the pile of bodies or whatever it is okay uh make an attack roll please I shall. <laughs> oh my god. That was with a plus five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you land on your ass and you get frustrated and you just mutter, mutter an incantation and just <laughs> and a fire bolt flies over and hits the pile of bodies. And you watch as a few of them scatter and just kind of like plas behind them. The disc lifts up in the air a little bit as if it was like a wave that it just went that went underneath it. Um, and then you look down and you see from a blast of something that had flown off of this pile and landed right on your leg is a hand. And it just is like on your leg and then you watch its finger twitch <laughs> and then you watch as it wraps all of its fingers around your leg and starts to cousin it no thing starts to thing its way up your leg and I think that is a good place to end this episode of Rabble Rousers